All right. I'm with Winston Wu. We're in Las Vegas and we're doing a podcast here outside New York, New York Casino and T-Mobile Arena. And so, Winston, uh, how are you doing today? Oh, I guess I'm okay. I mean, we're here in Las Vegas sitting outside on the strip and just people watching outside of the, the hotel New York, New York. And um, it's nice and warm out here at, at night. It is. Uh, I mean, I I lived in Las Vegas before. I, it's, it's great to be back here. What? How, uh, do, you, do you like being back here in Las Vegas? Well, it's nice and stuff and it's great weather and I love the dry air and <clears throat> there's a lot of good food everywhere and, and it's the strip is beautiful at night and very crowded but everything's just so expensive and with inflation it's even more than before so it's it's hard to, to do a whole lot you know you have to look for the free activities you know and, and low cost lower cost food which is yeah getting harder now I mean I can't even park a car in, in the on the strip in the garage anymore without paying a fee now especially at night so yeah I mean it's it's not as as cheap as it was before but it's still nice the weather and stuff and um, the really clean air I, I don't like humid air I like dry air so this this fits my body better I will 100% agree with that the the weather in Las Vegas is really perfect it's 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 hot sunny and it's it's dry heat uh and definitely the prices in america we're both coming from asia and this is it's outrageous it is they are you know, everything is you know but winston i wanted to ask you when you came back how many years were you in asia before you came back here to vegas oh gosh i haven't been back here since 2018 i think so yeah, it's been four years. Um, yeah, I went back to Philippines in 2019, and then I sp spent a couple of months in Thailand and Cambodia. Yeah, and then after that, yeah, then I went to visit my parents in Taiwan, and then then got stuck with this the COVID thing and all sorts of things. Yeah, it kept kept keeping me busy. So so yeah, I haven't been in the U.S. since for four years or or some. Geez, it's been a long time. It's 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 kind of like when you come back, there's a reverse culture shock. It Have is. you noticed that? Like, um, and reverse culture shock means you're you're kind of like shocked by the culture by your own culture when you come back because you're used to another culture for so long. You know, do you it's, experience that too? Reverse culture shock. It's true. Uh, I, uh, it's hard to explain. But what what were some things that you you noticed in, in terms of when you got back here? Well, just how expensive things are. Like, for example, the uh, the restaurants, the the meals now are like eleven to fifteen dollars. I mean, actually eleven to twenty dollars. Actually, so you can't eat out cheap anymore unless you go to Subway or, or Taco Bell or some or some fast food. Um, and people seem a lot fatter now. I don't know if um, that that's if it was the same before and you, you just don't notice it until you've been out of the country. And I've also noticed how it seems like people are very like self-absorbed. You know, people just seem, yeah, kind, kind of like they have that self-absorbed look and you don't see that in Asia really, that super self-absorbed look. And I think it was like that before, but I just don't notice it until I've been out of the country for a long time. It's all relative, you know. Do you notice that too, or what do you think? Um, sure. I, I mean, everything is much more fast-paced, I think, in America comp uh, when compared to Asia, where things are a little bit more relaxed, and you can kind of just go at a little bit slower pace. And um, I guess, yeah, everyone seems like they're just in their own, on their own little path, and you know. Yeah, in their we, own bubble. I know we, we talk about Americans like like we're all united and we're all connected. We're not. It's just not true. Uh, everyone's kind of in their own little clique. Everyone's in a clique, and you know. Um, but I don't know. That that is the one thing. The prices. The uh, everything has gotten way 
much more expensive. And you know, I was oh. talking to another guy uh, about the apartment prices and uh, how, oh, yeah. how hard it is to, to actually get an apartment uh, in America right now uh, with the requirements. Uh, you, have, you know, you have to show proof that you make three times the rental amount, and uh, some do, you know, credit checks, and it's very hard to get an apartment. Um, but uh, I mean, as far as as far as you know, Vegas, I I would live here if I'm gonna choose a, a city to live in. I'd live here. Um, yeah, I guess it's it's less boring than most places in America, isn't it? I mean, at least you know you have a beautiful view at night of the Strip. Sure, there, there's a lot of things to do here. Uh, it's great weather. You know, we got the Strip. Um, you know, you can go hiking, and uh, you know, there's uh, just there's a lot of like adventurous type things to do. Um, I think it's, it's a pretty good economy here in Nevada. So uh, there's, there's a lot of jobs. Um, yeah, it should be growing because people are moving here but, from other places. At least they were. I don't know about now. But. Sure. Um, and, um, well... I mean, any, yeah. any other any other things that, that you were thinking about when you came back from uh, from Taiwan? Well, no, that's pretty much it. I mean, not not much else has changed except everything's more expensive. People are still in their own bubbles. Um, but yeah, I mean, fortunately, my family has has some houses here, and so you know, I have a base here, and and, and you know, errands to take care of, and you know. We got bills to pay and, you know, insurance on cars and houses and all that stuff. It's, it's, it's a lot of trouble. It's a, when, when you when you settle in the U.S., you have so many bills and expenses. And, and I mean, I mean, there's even a garbage collection fee. There's a sewage fee. There, there's so many fees to keep up with. I mean, I, I, I've never understood how the average American deals with all that. I mean, it must be tough, you know, especially for someone like me. I'm not even a very practical person. I'm, I'm kind of a bit in my own world, you know, so t to deal with all these practical expenses is kind of a headache and, and a bit stressful. And I can sort of see how, how stressful it is for immigrants to, to come here when they first live here, you know. Um, but yeah, but the, the, the worst thing is uh, that tops all of that for me is, is the isolation. I mean, my neighbors don't talk to me. Everyone's in their own bubble. And you can feel between people there's a thick wall. You can't just randomly talk to people or, or, or flirt or something or, or just, you know, have a uh, dating or a social life. I mean, you have to establish those things early when you're in high school or something, I think. So because once you're an adult, everyone's in their own bubble and everyone wants to be left alone. And so it seems like everything here is geared towards families and couples you know there's nothing to do if you're a single person it seems like you're out of place especially if you're a single man you know yeah you're just out of place here there's nothing geared for you nothing for you it's not like you can just go to some matchmaking event and and, and you know meet women because even if you do go to, to those events they're going to be super picky so Basically, you're screwed as a single guy because every woman you meet claims to be taken or married. And if not, then they're very, very picky. So it's like a no win, at least for me. You know, I can't speak for every guy, but I'm sure a lot of people agree with me that it's just a no win. They, that's one thing I noticed about the women is that their expectations on what they want and like their st their standards are, are a lot higher, much much higher than than women in other countries that I've been to. Um, I was making some conversation here with women, uh, you know, just while I was buying, you know, drinks at stores, and it's kind of, and it was easy to talk to them, but you know, I, I know what you mean. It, it's it's a hard, uh, you know, the dating market. It's it's. Uh, it's not just hard. It's just not natural. I mean, there's just no way to win. I mean, even if I was playing a really hard video game, there's always a way to win. But, you know, if it's not meant to be, it, you can't win. So so I've always wondered, you know, how does the average American 
find a wife or a girlfriend in the U.S. And I've asked the smartest people I know, right. very high IQ about this. Nobody knows. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's all – it has to be – there's a certain – I don't know. It, it's kind of like some things are meant to be, like like destined. And if it is, then it happens. It's not something you make happen. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I know that goes against American philosophy because Americans believe that life is what you make it, and everything is a choice, and, and you can control things w- with your thoughts and your attitudes. But I don't know. The more I think about it, it seems like things are just meant to be or, or destined and, and if you're meant to be with someone it happens naturally you don't go out and choose it, it it's not like going to Walmart and, and buying something that you want it you know it, it has to happen naturally and every couple you ask even in America they'll tell you that that they met naturally through some friends or, or, or I don't know at school or maybe at work sometimes yeah. but you don't just go out and choose it to happen you know I don't, I don't know I know that's getting philosophical, but that's the only way to explain it because if, if the women aren't open to meeting men and they're not approachable and, and, and they don't need you and they're not interested in making in meeting men and making new friends, then how are you supposed to get a, a girlfriend or a wife? And why does everyone assume that everyone has a wife or a girlfriend? I mean, because in America, everything's geared toward couples and families. And on YouTube, everyone talks talks to the audience like like they have a wife already. So it's, it's, it's an assumption everything, everyone has a wife in America. But I don't see how you can get a wife if the women aren't even approachable or sociable or, or wanting to meet new people. So I don't know. Maybe that's a loser question, but... but I mean, it, it seems like a logical question to me. I mean, if any of you listening to this have the, have an answer to this, I you know feel free to post it in the comments section because I've asked the smartest people I know. Nobody can explain this. I mean, this is just one mystery. There's a lot of mysteries that that I that I have questions about. Not just this, you know. Like another mystery would be how is America a free country if all the rules are strict? And very uptight and Americans follow the rules religiously you know so whereas in Mexico or Philippines the rules are not uptight they're very loose I, well, so how is America freer I don't get that I mean one, one thing that about women in the West it's just that they're they're very independent they're they're taught to be very independent from a young age they don't go when we've been in other countries, there the women are more traditional, and they literally um, they're they're with, they view the the man as as the relationship. They they fall into the relationship instead of you know being an independent. You know, they lose. They don't they don't want to be independent. They want to be with the man. They want the man to lead. Uh, I, I think women are kind of they they maintain that independence, and that independence kind of like pushes like they you know I, I, it's it has to do with feminism too and you know but uh, yeah it's taken to an extreme the independence here right but, it's not just a little bit I mean anything a little bit is okay but when you take it to, to like a 100% independence where you don't need anybody at all and you never get lonely I mean that's just unnatural it, it's too extreme that's the thing I, I don't like about uh, most countries is everything in some ways is, is extreme I mean I mean they don't shoot for a, a balance a moderation you know what I mean like like if American women were, were, were wanted some independence but not total independence you know that would be, make the dating scene a lot easier like like if they say I need a man I'm not independent sure you know at least to some degree you know when something is in extremes you know that's I guess that's how you learn you know well, in life it is to my experience extremes it's you know I, it, I we've kind of lost that traditional way in America we've lost the traditional way of doing things I, and it's, it's but yeah. um, anyway um, I guess uh, yeah but yeah, that is the the main thing that holds me back from living in America is is the is the prices of everything. The costs are so high. 
Uh, you have to have a vehicle in most places. And once you go ex, I mean, once you go on that expat journey and you've lived that expat life, you, you really don't go back. You, it's not, once you've tasted it, you, you don't want to go back to America anymore. <laughs> But, um, yeah, that's what I've noticed. A lot of expats have said that, that once they go abroad, they don't really ever want to come back. And if they do, it's it's reluctantly, it's against their will. And they're, they're never able to readjust. Sure. Because it seems like America's just like a, a, a I don't know, like a, a prison matrix. Like you're enslaved just to, to work all the time and, and to never be yourself, to never be free. But you're told that you're free because CNN tells you you're living in a democracy and so you're, you're, you should be free, but you're not. So I don't know. It just seems like a lot of mind control and, and brainwashing because what you hear and what you see don't match or what you experience doesn't match what, what CNN tells you or the media tells you about America being the land of the free. And, and they claim that you're free just because you can vote. But just because you can vote doesn't make you free because if you're not free to be yourself and do what you want and, 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 you know, pursue the romance and love that you want, then you're not free, even if you vote. But, you know, the media never talks about that ever, not once, ever. Yeah, it's hard to be free here, especially when you're always working. You're always working just to survive. And it, it, you're not, that's not really being free. And... Um, I, um, yeah, that's another big mystery I've always wondered. How can you be free if you're a slave to money, if the rules are, are very strict? You know, it, it doesn't add up. I mean, there's no... If you love freedom. what you do, if you love what you do for work... Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. then you maybe have somewhat a level of freedom. Yeah. How many people love what they do, though? I mean... Sure. Uh, probably very few, and, and some of them who claim to are probably pretending to too you know they because in america you always have to be positive you know you always have to say i love what i do i'm doing great you know things are going great you got to keep up that positivity whether you feel it or not that's part of the culture you know if you can't if you're not free to be honest how can you be free you know if you if you're not free to say how you feel like i am doing right now you know then you're not free because the stuff i'm saying now would be totally taboo not only in the media, but on most YouTube channels, you know, they would consider what I say taboo. And, and in most social groups, you know, if not all social groups, they would consider this kind of talk taboo, too, because you're not supposed to analyze and question like this. You're supposed to just say, yeah, I'm doing great. I'm having a great time and, you know, pretending things are, are good and stuff. Yeah. And another thing I've always asked is, how are we united at all? How, how are all of us united with all of us? We're not. <laughs> you know, in what way? How are we united? Well, well, I, I think that when the media says that Americans are united, it's not like a real, like a tribal community type of united. It means kind of like everyone has one mind, one belief, you know, like like politi being politically correct, not being a racist, um, you know, um, um, tre treating women equally and stuff and being independent and, and, you know, loving the freedom in America, supposed supposed freedom. You know, when, when they talk about these values, the shared values is what they're talking about. Not, not, not that people are really a community or a tribe. No, people are, are isolated in their own bubbles, but, but they, they, they want everyone to think the same, you know, they want everyone to agree. I mean, I can I, I can definitely think of some positives about America. Is that uh, there are opportunities here in terms of like, if you want to, if you want to do some things with your career, you can definitely do that here, and, it, and you will advance um, edu education. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, there are high-paying jobs in this country, um, but you know, what's the trade-off? The trade-off is that it's a the cost of living is, is much is getting higher, and that's why a lot of people are, are going remote with re remote working, and they're you know going to uh, to Mexico, and they're they're living in Mexico, and they're working for an, a company in America remotely. Um, oh yeah, that's one solution to get out of America is to find a, re a job that lets you work remotely, C kind of like Tim Ferriss talks about in, in the Four Hour Work Week. Um, if you can do that, that'd be great. That'd be a great way to get out of America. But you need some skills 
in order to work work remotely. I don't know if just being an editor is enough. You know, a copy editor or a writer. I mean, do you, do you need some special skills to be to work remotely, Andrew? I mean, well, what's your take on that? Of course, but the, of course you need skills. But uh, the thing is, is that the the most college degrees. A lot of these remote companies that they don't they don't care about that having a degree. You can as long as you can prove that you have the skills, and you can get the skills by online courses. You know, there's a lot of uh, um, online kind of uh, programs that you can you know purchase and then and then take the course and then and then practice the skill, show that you have the skill, and then and then get that job. Um, that's what I recommend. I I don't. Um, you know, I don't have a four-year degree, and I got hired, um, you know, just by proving that I have skills. Um, so, um, and yeah, I do. I do plan on going to Mexico um, pretty soon. Um, but but what if you're, you're you just know how to type and you're good in English and you're just good in word processing? I mean, is that enough to get a remote job? No, no, it's. They're still competitive. They're still competitive, oh. but the, that's the great Can, can't thing. Can't you be a copy editor or? No, uh, like that. <laughs> because there's there's so many people applying for these jobs <laughs> that uh, you know. Or, or or what about like being a call center representative? Oh no, they probably outsource that to the Philippines now. Have you noticed that call centers are outsourcing all their customer reps to the Philippines and stuff? They do. But here's another one thing I want to ask you, Winston. Aside from you know education and uh, financial you know opportunities for high paying jobs. What are some other pros about America do you, that you can say that are good, positive things about this country? Um, well, I guess that unlike Asia, it's very easy to park a car here, and when you drive, people um, people are nice about letting you letting you in, and and um, and, and they try to follow the law, so it's easy to drive safely here. Um, and it's easy to park a car when you go to the supermarket. Whereas in, 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 in at least in Taiwan, for example, it's hard to park a car anywhere, um, even at a supermarket. It's kind of a pain. You have to look for either a garage or, or a parking lot or, or some some sidewalk to be free to park at. So it's a real inconvenience to park a car in Taiwan. And probably in a lot of Asia, it's like that. But yeah, in America, they make parking a car easier. Um, the streets are clean, they're, they're safe. Um, there's not a lot of, I mean, I, I don't experience any crime really. I, I know that the news has a lot of crime and, and, you know, maybe they focus on the most extreme examples, but yeah, usually generally the average person doesn't experience like a crime or get mugged or get involved in a fist fight. Usually, I mean, the media just focuses on the worst examples. So it's generally pretty safe and clean and, um, and yeah, I mean, I mean, you can walk outside on, on the street and near your house barefoot, you know, without getting dirty very much. Um, and and yeah, I mean, uh, and the services and the food is good. There's there's a lot of variety, but you know, so but there's just too, too much junk. Yeah, there's too much choices, but there's too much junk food too. I mean, the the problem with America. The, with the food in America, it's, it's hard to, to eat healthy. I mean, you, you tend to overeat a lot, especially if you feel empty or bored or isolated. You, you, you tend to try to fill your void with food, and that's that's one of the traps of America, is when people feel empty or depressed or there's a big hole in, inside them, their heart, they try to eat, to use food to fill that void, and, and that leads to obesity or something and so it's it's hard to eat healthy even though there's so many choices too many temptations um i mean okay keep going well i was just saying yeah i mean i mean i i like and i like the nature in america the landscape is very beautiful there's a lot of beautiful national parks and uh hiking trails and open space to enjoy the land I just don't like the workaholic lifestyle or how, how people are isolated and, and, and sure. closed off from each other and how you can't talk to a stranger easily, um, especially to a female, because sometimes older men will, will, talk, will start the conversation with you, but it's always an older male or an older couple that starts a conversation with you. You don't, you're not going to find, I mean, women don't use, aren't usually open to talking to strangers. You, 
you know, I mean, that might be true pretty much anywhere, but here it's very extreme, extremely true. Yeah, what for, were you going to say? For uh, Amazon, uh, I you can order something on Amazon and get it, you know, delivered. Uh, oh, yeah. In like two days. Because I was in Vietnam. Sorry. I was uh, in Vietnam and, uh, God, like there were some electronics with my computer that I needed and it was hard to find them. I had to... But here, if I'm in America, I can, I, I'm to definitely find what I need in terms of uh, electronics or computer parts or something, and and get it delivered like, you know, very quickly. Or in some countries, you can't, you know, you can't find those those items that you need. <coughs> um. Yeah, I, I guess for for consumer products. And, and business and online shopping, America is really good for that. I mean, it's tech, it seems like the only thing that improves is technology and consumerism. Yeah, that's so. Those true. are the only two things that get better. Everything else doesn't. And yeah, I, they're always pressuring you to buy the the new stuff, like they're all, the new iPhone, the um, and they're, so they're always pressuring you to consume more. That that does. Um, and yeah but uh, so yeah the, the the negatives that prevent me from really living here is uh, I guess that people are just kind of in their cliques and it's kind of isolated and you kind of have to meet people through a friend um, like if you want um, and, the, and the cost and yeah, you just don't feel you don't really feel that free when you're always working, and yeah, when it, that's the thing about Southeast Asia when you're literally paying nothing for your your rent, your transportation, your food, and your and it's a fraction of the cost of the U.S. You have more peace of mind. You have less stress. You have more freedom. You have more control. You have more money in your pocket, and um, I guess that that creates. And plus, Southeast Asia is just like a real. It's kind of a, it's a real uh, peaceful environment, and the and the people there are real happy and cheerful. It's just once you go with that expat life, you you don't want to go back. You don't want to go back. And, and it's not just America. I've heard the same thing with people in the UK. People in Australia, uh, they say in Canada, they say the same thing. But um, yeah, that's what I see too. But uh, I'm so curious. How come people on YouTube don't talk about this, and or in travel blogs? I mean, millions of Americans have been overseas. How how, how is it that more people don't talk about this kind of stuff? They it, do, that kind they, of mind boggling. No, they do. There's a lot of YouTube videos uh, where they say. Uh, I let I lived abroad, and and uh, I love it much more than I than America. That there, there are. Yeah, yeah. It seems like now there are more than before in the last five years. But what I mean is, like in in 2010 or 2015, I mean people didn't talk about this stuff at all ever. I mean, but what I mean is, since the 1980s, when America became more and more isolating, millions of Americans have been abroad. And came back, so so you would think a lot more people than this would be talking about it. You would think at least, you know, there would be thousands of people in the media talking about it at least. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, I, I've never I've never seen a video though that says I lived abroad for ten years and I'm now I'm so glad to be back in America. I'm staying no, here now. No. I've never seen a video like that. But when I first talked about this in 2002, after going to Russia, I, I was like the only one ever. I mean, I mean, nobody on the Internet in 2002 was talking about this at all, period. I mean, they were talking about romance tours with foreign women. But that was it. Nobody said that, oh, I felt a lot freer in America and I was able to meet people and, and date women easily, unlike in America. No. But you know why it, most people, they're literally trapped in the matrix it's they are trapped it's it's a mental oh yeah prison in america sometimes because you 
or a lot of people are not aware. They're not aware that you have this option where you can go to another country and start a new life. They're not aware that this option is available. Yeah, and that's what I don't get. I, I mean, there are free thinkers on YouTube, and all they talk about are conspiracies, but they don't talk about leaving America. They act like, like the option doesn't exist. Have you noticed that? The biggest YouTubers, they don't recommend leaving America. They, they talk about these conspiracies about what the government's doing, well, you know, how they're taking away our freedoms, and, and, and um, they talk about Russia and Ukraine and, and how this war is hoaxed or, or that event is hoaxed or, or stage school shootings or something. And, and you know, I, I don't know if that stuff is true but or how much of the conspiracy world is true, but they don't talk about leaving America for a better life or a better relationship or a lower cost living, you know. Nobody, no, none of the major truthers like uh, David Icke, Alex Jones, or mm -hmm. Mark Passio, or, or uh, Jordan Maxwell, or, or uh, what is it, Michael Tessarian. There's a ton of amateur truther podcasts. Yep. They don't talk about this. They don't recommend leaving America. They assume you can't. It doesn't exist. And some of the guys I listen to on YouTube, they assume that if you if you exit the system, you're going to be living in a box in the woods. So there's no way out of America. You, you, you live in America or you live in the forest as a hermit living in a, in a shack or a box. That's what they assume. Have you noticed that? I mean, they act like this option doesn't even exist. It's not even discussable. And, and I know not. you're right. Not everyone can leave America because some people don't have the money and some people are tied down to America. But what I'm saying is the option should be on the table as a possibility to discuss not treat it like it doesn't exist, like almost every YouTuber does. Exactly. And, it, you know, what if you were to go on CNN or, or some, like, major, like, media outlet and, and just talk about this? What do you, what do you think people, the anchors, the other co-hosts would say to you? Well, I think they would try to shame me or something and, and, and you know, say, hey, I, I, I'm doing fine in America. Maybe the problem is you. You know, people like to shame you or put you down. Or they'll cut you off completely. You know, they'll just just delete your your interview and not even broadcast it. I've had interviews that were never broadcast because talking about this is taboo. Um, but yeah, it's either that or they'll shame you and put you down and say maybe the problem is is you. I, I've never had a problem getting dates in America and, and and or or getting a girlfriend and maybe the problem is you. You know, they'll always shame you in some way. Well, another thing is this, it's just not that it's it's not entirely that easy to just get up and, and go to another country. A lot of people are there. They have commitments. They have, uh, you know, maybe, you know, they, they don't have the, the resources to do it uh, or they're, they're not, you know, they have yeah. they have family. That's true. But the thing is, it's achievable. I, I mean, the people on, on the Mayflower, you know, when they came from England to America, I mean, they faced a lot of hardships and a lot of people died on the Mayflower, but they were able to make it because, you know, there's a saying, if there's a will, there's a way. But I think it's not just about the money or something. I mean, some people just, it's it doesn't register in their brain, you know. It's like their mind cannot see the possibility of living abroad. It doesn't click with them or it's not in their blood. Someone on my forum said, you know, expats are, are different because it's in their blood to, to live overseas. And and some people can't see that. It's just not in their mentality. They can't fathom it. They always see themselves as living in America. I think you said that a lot of people you know in your hometown are like that too, right? They can't fathom living abroad. It just doesn't register in their, their, their mentality or their, their view of the world. They, they are... They have... They have family. They have commitments. They are. They have an incentive financially to be here in the country because of their job. Yeah, there's that, but I mean, it doesn't click in their their me mental. Have you noticed that it doesn't click with them mentally? They don't see it. it they can't think about it. It does take a truly free spirited, uh, like a, a person who wants. You have to want. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, and you have to be open minded too. And you have to be open minded, right? Yeah, most people are probably not. They're probably narrow and, and closed, and they're set in their ways, especially if they're older. I mean, older people are going to be more set in their ways, more rigid, you know. Um, um, yeah, it might, it might be that a younger person 
might be more open-minded to this stuff. Who knows, I mean. But it could be the opposite, too, because a lot of older people are more down-to-earth and not a, a, as fake, at, you know. So, so sometimes older people can relate to us, too. So it really depends on the person. Um, and I've noticed that in America, like, like the people that are older, over 50, tend to be more down-to-earth. Especially the elderly. Why do you think that is? They're easier to have a meaningful conversation. Well, I don't know. I think it's because in their generation, people were more down to earth, even in America. And I guess older people have more wisdom. But the thing is, that's not true everywhere. For example, um, in Russia, the older people tend to be pretty grouchy. They're not as friendly. Oh, okay. And I think it's because they lost all their money when the USSR crashed or something. The, the, the ruble tanked and so they lost all their savings that's what I heard the reason was but they just look really grouchy and grumpy and in Russia it's the opposite the younger people are friendly and open but the older people are more grouchy whereas in the US it's the opposite any any stranger you talk to is going to be older and um, yeah the elderly in America are very open to talking to strangers and having a, a good conversation so um yeah, some people. I guess some people just have have the expat in their blood. They just, you know, it's in them. Um, yeah, yeah. It seems like what that about most things, you know. So, you know, if you ask people that join the army, I mean, they'll tell you it's not because of benefits or or to, to, to serve their country. I mean, it's in their blood. So a lot of them do it. It's in their blood, and, and if you ask the people that climb Mount Everest and risk their lives, they'll tell you it's in their blood too. There's no logical reason to risk your life climbing a mountain. They do it because it's in their blood, you know. Sure. A lot of things are like that. Um. Are you feeling okay? Or? Yeah. I, I, I mean. We're here in Vegas right now. We're outside of uh, New York, New York Casino and T-Mobile Arena. Uh, walking around the Strip area has been a lot of fun. I, I really... Vegas is an exciting place. Yeah, there's a lot of places to walk around the Strip, and it's good exercise. It is. You know, it, it's just that I just don't like how... You know, Vegas tends to draw people that are very materialistic and shallow, and so... It just has this very materialistic vibe to it, and that doesn't fit my personality, of course. But, but it's beautiful at night, you know. I just wish America was not so hyper materialistic. And and yeah, I mean, it's just too much, you know. Too it way too extreme, way off the charts. Yeah. yeah, you. That's what it is. That that is what America is. It's all about money. It's money and 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 consumerism and. And that's it. <laughs> so that's what that's where your freedom is. Is you have the freedom to make money here. It's it's like the other guy said. Uh, it's it's use America as a, as a place to invest to make your money, and then if you want, take that money to another country and then live there. Oh yeah, one of our advisors said that. Um, yeah, once you have enough money in America, you gotta, uh, you know, sever your attachments and try to live abroad in a more happier country. So I guess it's just it's what we want in our own lives. We don't we don't prioritize making money a lot of money that much, which is why we prioritize other things like having more freedom or um, or more social you know connection in other countries uh, or more. Um, you know, so I guess I guess people who, you know, you know yeah, they, they, they want the, you know, the money making opportunities here, and you know that's what, or they're they're not aware of of that you can be happier abroad. But happier abroad is you know for every country. It's not just for America. It's for you know people because when I was in Vietnam, I met a lot of people uh there's there's a russian community there's a ukrainian community in uh nha chang so um. yeah uh, yeah um 
Yeah, when the media talks about travel, it, it's just about they just focus on vacation. They don't talk about people who live abroad. I don't know why the media doesn't encourage leaving America or leaving abroad. At least, it's never something that the media focuses on. They assume you're just traveling, and you'll come back anyways. But you, you know the important point I, I got to make is that we all assume other people are like us, and, and they're not. Because, for example, people like us and the people on my forum, they're focused on like the dating scene, uh, how friendly the women are, and, and and the social connection. The average person, I don't think, cares about that stuff. They they just want to make a living and, and and maximize their profit and avoid pain. You know, they don't they don't place a priority on these things like we do. So I that's, think that's that's one of the reasons we're different. The other people don't make a big deal out of these things. Have you noticed that mainstream people don't talk about how friendly women are or how approachable they are? I mean, these aren't top ish, important issues for the average person. Or I don't know. Maybe they are. I can't speak for other guys or other people or what they're thinking. But that's the impression I get that the things we talk about are not a priority to these other people. That's why they don't talk about them. Haven't you? You get that sense too that other people are just not thinking about these things. I mean, most people or the average person doesn't I focus on these things for I, some reason. All I see is just people that are in the matrix. I mean, <clears throat> like there's tons of people walking out of T-Mobile Arena right now, and I don't know they they look real happy. They look like they're having a great time. Um, so, yeah, I guess <laughs> I guess I guess that. We don't know. We are different. Uh, we, uh, not everyone is, uh, you know, they're 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 happy being here in America. I guess. Well, they they say they are, but you know, I, you don't know whether they really are. I, I think it, it's a mix. I mean, there's a philosophy in America: of fake it till you make it. So if you pretend to be happy and cheerful every day, maybe you can be be more happy and positive and cheerful if you fake it every day. Some people actually believe that's true. It's not true for me, but but there are people that claim that that works for them. And, you know, it, maybe it does work for some people. And, I mean, maybe some people have convinced themselves that they're happy. Because you can lie to yourself. You can delude yourself, too. Some people can tell themselves, I'm happy every day, and actually be somewhat happy by, by fooling themselves. Um Maybe I just can't do that. I'm just too too honest about that, you know. But I can't speak for everyone. I can only speak for myself and and people that I know. I don't know. Well, if you know, if you're listening, there's how many how many countries are there? Over 100, 190 countries. So see, for me, like, I, it was curiosity. I I just wanted to I wanted to see what's out there in the world. It was curiosity at first. And, um, Do you think it was in your blood to live overseas too? I mean, no, because my my friend was the my friend called me and he said, "Do you want to come down here to Colombia?" And and I I said yes, yeah. so I got on a plane. No, I I didn't know about happy or abroad. I didn't know about living abroad. I was I was. Oh, I see. I yeah, see. I, I didn't know about it. So when you saw my site, then then it made sense. I mean, the the, the stuff I said kind of resonated with what you saw but couldn't put into words exactly i started reading the articles and then i I thought about it in terms of my own experience and i was like yeah this is this is true because in the beginning when you feel the things we're talking about you can't put it into words because we're not raised to articulate these things no no i wanted to ask you that how like when 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 did you write those articles did you write after you lived abroad or and that's when you realized or Oh, of course. I mean, I first went to Russia in 2002, and that's when, when my mind was open to all this stuff. And that's when I started writing all these articles. And I was shocked because I was wondering why why didn't anyone talk about this before? And eventually I found a, a, a following, and, and I had my own email list and stuff. I mean, I didn't start the website till 2007, but, but yeah, for a number of years I was writing all these articles and... and um, I don't know. I, I guess I'm good at explaining things or putting them into words or, you know, crystallizing them into words because in the beginning, it's hard to put these things into words because, 
you know, you're not conditioned to see these things that we're talking about. You're not considered conditioned to make these comparisons, you know, because or observations. Exactly, I mean, because most people are just going with the flow. Yeah, yeah. Most people go with the flow. They they, they, they get on the rat, the tr- rat race or treadmill and, and they're just living to make money and, and doing what the media says. I mean, but um, – and some people are just closed-minded. When they hear this stuff, and they tune it out. It doesn't register with them for some reason. You know, I guess, you know, everyone's on, on, a, on their own wavelength. And if this doesn't register with some people, they're just going to tune it out. You, you know, even people who are open-minded about uh, UFOs or Bigfoot, if, when we talk about this stuff, they tune it out. You know, so not everyone is open-minded about everything. Some people w- will be open-minded about aliens or, or conspiracy theories or, or uh, Bigfoot or, or ghosts or, or, or paranormal phenomenon. But as soon as you talk about happier abroad and how, how you, you're so much more free and happy overseas, they tune it out. I know. And, it's and, weird. It's and how, how many guys, when they go to the Philippines, are not happy? <laughs> From America. Well, every guy I, I've noticed there is happier, I guess. Um, but some the Philippines isn't for everybody. Some people, you know, can't stand that infrastructure because it's not very comfortable. I mean, it's hard on your body to breathe in pollution, and, and the the living spaces are not as comfortable as the U.S. Is and it? so, some people cannot tolerate the Philippines. They're better off in, in, in I don't know in another country maybe. Is there pollution everywhere in Philippines? Almost, except in the village areas. Um, yeah, I mean, they don't control the carbon emissions or, or whatever, or the stuff that comes out of the car and stuff. And, and there's not very many controls on things. It's kind of a, yeah, I mean, it, it's all it's almost a third world country, kind of a bit like Mexico, but um, but probably safer than Mexico because it's the people there are not violent. So it's probably a little safer, but... Um, but I, I mean, I love the Philippines for its great dating life and, and, and uh, uh, women there and, and, and stuff. And um, it's easier to find love and romance there. But yeah, you don't. Some I, people. No, but let, let me ask you this: Have, have, you, have you ever met anyone, any guy from America, who went to Southeast Asia and did not like it and did not come back hap- a happier person? Just a few, but but it's not because of. of the women or something they came back because um they missed their house they needed they need a comfortable couch and a comfortable house to live in and, and they couldn't tolerate the third world environment it's, i know some guys that are like world. that it, like thailand is not third world no no philippines though i mean some people some of my friends came back and said they couldn't tolerate it and so they prefer to bring a wife back to the to, to america with them than live abroad because some people you know they need that the, the house they have and the couch and the comforts in America some guys cannot step right, apart from that you remember you know? when you made that post or article and you said that the when you go to the Philippines there's this soothing calming energy that you feel that you don't feel in America you feel distress vibe in America but when you go to the Philippines there's a soothing vibe Oh yeah, it's, that, that's priceless, and it's hard to explain because you have to experience that to know what I mean. What, what, I mean, in, the Philippines is very non-judgmental and free-spirited, and um, well, yeah, when they're when you're there, nobody judges you or tells you what to do. So, so, um, so that's priceless. It's very, very liberating, and and I can be myself too. I, I can, no. I, I can, yeah, I, I can meet women. I can flirt. I can. Um, give a woman a compliment and, and it's all cool I never feel like a creep or I'm like I'm doing something taboo or violating a boundary like like you would in, in, in America I mean okay but let me ask you this because when I read that I was like that that's perfect but so there's definitely a stress kind of a stressful vibe here in America yeah like an tightness yeah it's it's kind of like you're always have to be on this fast paced like racetrack but when you're on in the Philippines, like you said, there's a soothing, calming, kind of like relaxed, easygoing vibe. What is responsible in Philippines for creating this atmosphere? Wow, that's a good question. You know, I guess it's the culture and the attitude. And 
I don't know. It, it seems like different places also have their own vortex too. Some places ha have a different energy field than other places. Maybe like a different vortex too. And, and um, you know, it's hard to say why. You know, obviously it's the culture, the people, and wherever you go, you're gonna feel the energy from other people whether you want to or not, the, the vibe from other people rub off on you. For example, in America, there's a very paranoid, uptight vibe. And whether you are paranoid or not, that vibe is going to rub off on you. So you, it's hard to not be paranoid because everyone else's vibe is rubbing on you. And, um, and yeah, I mean, th but this is something priceless. I mean, you, you, you can't, you have to experience this to know, know what I mean. I mean, it's not words can't do justice to, to it. I, I think I read something that the Spanish conquered the Philip the native Filipinos. Yeah, but that was like four hundred years ago, and so the Filipinos are mixed with Spanish blood, and also with with I heard they're mixed with Indian blood and and Chinese blood too. So they've mi intermixed with a lot of okay, different so races. It, so would you? Okay, so, but but the, the the good weather probably contributes to it and. Um, Maybe, um, but if it was just a weather, I mean, you, you would say the same about Florida. I mean, I mean, I mean, Florida is still part of the U.S., but it's probably a happier place than, than, than Minnesota or something, <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, warm, warm weather, I think, makes people a little bit happier, right? When, yeah. you're, when you're cold, you're kind of, you're not as happy. <laughs> Yeah, that's generally true, but there's a lot of other factors too. When when you were in Vietnam, did you feel a soothing vibe too, or in Thailand? Or yes, absolutely. It's, it's something about Southeast Asia in general, I, and Indonesia also. I felt that way, but not in Singapore. Oh Sing no, Singapore is no. very uptight. No, that's like Hong Kong. It's all workaholic, uptight, r rigid, strict, all about rules. Singapore is all about rules. It's so busy. It's, it's built for business, you know. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's taken to the extreme, right? Like like Hong Kong. Um, yeah, anything to the extreme is no good. I mean, especially when it's materialism. Um, yeah. yeah, Thailand does have a little bit of a sort of a soothing vibe, but I would say the Philippines has a lot more than, than soothing vibe than Thailand does. I mean, I mean, there's a noticeable difference because Thais don't always smile like they used to, and some a lot of Thais don't even like foreigners. So, so, but but you don't get that attitude in the Philippines. The Philippines has is way more warm in terms of the vibe. So, it's all relative, like I said, you know. It's, um, yeah. But but th the Thailand vibe is probably better than an American vibe, yeah, for sure. Sure. Um, and in Vietnam, you had a, there was a soothing vibe too. You said, "Oh, it's so good that people watch." There's a roller coaster going up and down in front of us as we're talking. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. What about the vibe in Vietnam? It's almost well. It's they have. Uh, it's, it's they have their own culture it's they're just <laughs> it's it's very it's similar to Thailand but it's it's different <laughs> same same but different yeah some differences are hard to explain in words you know yeah, they're it's just kind of hard. it's oh. just different you can't describe it you but know? It, it is definitely they are very cheerful over there they're very they don't stress too much um, but my girlfriend did tell me that like the work environment there um, is a little bit, uh, it's like they, they, they definitely work you a lot there, but I, I've never, I don't know about because I've never worked in Vietnam, but. Yeah, and keep in mind, I mean, Vietnamese and Chinese can be materialistic too. I mean, and everyone knows that, that Asia can be very materialistic too. But the thing is, it's, it's not as like, it doesn't feel like that's you know like in Singapore where everything is controlled and regulated, yes, you know it's like that, 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 that sterile vibe. There's still humanity there. It doesn't feel sterile, like like Orwell's 1984, like that. 
you me- have you remember that novel 1984 by Orwell it doesn't have that that sterile controlled vibe where everything is controlled by this corporation or the state and you're sterile and your mind is zombified I mean the people there are still natural people even even in China the people are social and natural like in China when I flirt with a girl it might be a little inappropriate but it doesn't make me feel like a criminal or a bad guy for violating a boundary because people are still naturally social there than in the US even yeah. mainland China so I actually felt more free in mainland China than, than in America believe it or not and you'll never ever hear that in CNN or Fox News ever not once are, ever. They, are, are they playful cheerful kind of like no, not as much as the Philippines. No, Chinese are more serious, and of course they're going to be more narrow-minded. They're not going to be as free-spirited and, and happy-go-lucky like the Philippines. But, but um, they're more natural. Like when I talk to them, I feel like I'm talking to a normal human being. It doesn't feel like I'm talking to someone that that's just I don't know paranoid of strangers or. or um, they're still more human. They're still a humanness about them that you just don't get in America or, or I don't know or Singapore or Japan you don't get that humanness feeling because it, it, for some reason things are taken to the extreme and it's become so sterile I, I don't get how people tolerate that I mean I've never understood that and, and you're not even allowed to talk about this openly either yeah, yeah I, I for some reason I even if I was making tons of money, like, I don't know, $200,000 a year here in, here in America, I just wouldn't feel free. There's just something about just being here that yeah. is just, you, do, you just don't feel truly free. Yeah, and it's hard to put a finger on, you know. It's not just for the reasons we said. There's some, something else that's hard to put a finger on, you know what yeah. I mean? And like, it's, some things are hard to describe. It, it feels like you can't go too much outside of the boundaries here you can't really uh, there's a lot of rules here yeah and some of the rules are unspoken too they're not all official rules yeah a lot of it's cultural and unspoken rules there's a there's, every culture has unofficial rules too they're not just official rules uh, wow uh, are, are you um, are you planning on going back to Asia anytime soon yeah, yeah. As soon as we get all, all the bills and stuff on auto pay and stuff, and I, I don't know, and um, do I might do a few more road trips and stuff. And I mean, there's there's I mean, America is beautiful. I mean, like in Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, those are such beautiful states. There's so much to sure, see. Sure, but there's there's nature in all parts of the world. There's you know. Yeah, but I like that dry desert nature, like that Utah and Arizona has. You know that it's pristine. You know the land; it feels clean. It is because when you're in Asia, the 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 air is more humid, and so so you, there's all this moldiness and insects more that it's harder to enjoy the outdoors with too many insects or moldiness. You know, or when the air is moldy or humid. You know. Yeah, but what? You know what? The number one, well, another big factor is just. I was gonna say the women. The the women are just a huge draw for me. It's just, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, actually, we, we've already been over the women, uh, so we we don't want to keep talking about yeah, that. Yeah, but it's important, though. I mean, I mean. As normal men, we like women, so that, that's an important issue. But the thing is, nobody talks about stuff like this because, or very few people do, because I, I don't know. It seems like you're not supposed to, to focus on this kind of stuff. You're supposed to focus on your job and, and on eating food and, and I don't know, and being politically correct or, or, or meditation or something. You know, but none of these things satisfy a man's need for romance and love and, and, and female companionship. Yeah. But on YouTube, that's all everyone anyone offers is some love yourself, new age attitude or some Buddhist message about meditation. But those aren't those are just temporary fixes to relieve stress. They're not going to solve your problems. 
they don't, they're not real solutions, but America doesn't give you solutions. That's why this podcast is important exactly. because, you, because we have real solutions and America doesn't. If you're in a, if you're in a bad place, if you're in like a, a place that's just miserable, just doing, just doing what Tony Robbins tells you to do. It's going to yeah. make your like mental state more calm and peaceful and optimistic and maybe but you're still in that bad place. You're still in that place where like that just kind of brings down your energy level. And so this the ultimate solution is just it's just like they say in real estate. Location is everything. Well, it's the same thing here location is 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 the key to your life to having a good life so find out where what place makes you happy and, and go there you know yeah it seems like like the solution is to find the right location but nobody talks about this everyone is focused on, on changing themselves or changing your thoughts even on youtube all the alternative free thinkers they all talk about changing your thoughts rather than change your, your location because they believe that your reality changes if your thoughts change and, and you know that's a very very exaggerated I mean just because I, I think positive thoughts or I love myself or I love other people it's not going to change anything of the things we talked about today at all you know American culture is still what it is the women are still not friendly or approachable or, or interested in meeting men and everything is still very expensive and, and there's no social connection. None of those things change just because I love myself or I love other people or, or I'm, I'm uh, uh, being positive and thinking positive thoughts or, 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 or I meditate or, or I focus on, on, on using my mind to create my reality. I mean, none of those things change anything. It's just a, it just makes you feel good for two seconds. That's it. That's all the American culture and the New Age has to offer you is these feel-good sound bites that are cheap and only last two seconds, but they, they solve nothing. You know, they don't solve anything. When I moved to the Philippines, a lot of my problems were solved, you know, just by moving to, to, to Southeast Asia. Um, that's a real solution that changes all the things we talked about. But meditation and loving yourself and being positive doesn't change any of this at all. It just makes you feel good for two seconds. I mean, I can be like everyone and tell you to love yourself and love each other. But what's that going to do? What are you going to do with that? You're, it's going to make you feel good for one or two seconds and then that's it. It's over. Useless, you know, completely useless. But that's all everyone talks about. I don't know why on YouTube, even free thinkers, that's all they say. Sure. Haven't you noticed that? I mean, it's like a universal blind spot everyone has. Yeah, but I mean, it's not. Yeah, it, it does. I mean, who yeah. who are the major ones? Like, don't Tony Robbins? What, what are some other self help? Uh, oh gosh, there's so many. I mean, there's there's Deepak Chopra. There's um, and there, there's Wayne Dyer, but he passed away, I think. And then there's a uh, gosh, oh, there's a Greg Braden, New Age people, Greg Braden. There's countless names. I mean, if you're talking New Agers, but the thing is, these people don't call themselves New Age. Okay, I call them that, but they call themselves just less truth seekers or consciousness people, or they just call themselves spiritual people. Right. And there's a ton of Buddhists too, but like I said, all they talk about is changing your thoughts. You know, their, their books even say, if you change your thoughts, you, even Joel Osteen, that preacher, he has a book that says, change your thoughts, change your life, or change your thoughts, change your reality. So they all think that the key to changing your life is to change your thoughts. Okay, it, it is partially true. That is yeah. partially true. But if you're in like a really bad place, just, you know, just changing your thoughts isn't going to truly help you like 100 percent yes if if you already have a negative mindset if your thoughts are negative and you have some negative thinking of course of course what they're saying is going is going to help you yeah it's partially true but it's not enough it's it's incomplete but that's all most people ever tell you is to change your thoughts for example yeah for example like i i literally hate tennessee like i, I just hate it okay so i can't live there and that's why i left uh, so I was I became happier abroad by leaving Tennessee and and, and moving. Were um, you happier in Tennessee when you were a kid, or, or no, just as an adult? No, never, no, ever. I so it doesn't fit you then. 
Yeah, uh, but yeah, and that's another thing. Some places fit certain people. I heard, I think it was Brian Rose say that different cities in the world speak to different personalities. So if you're kind of like a, uh, you know, you, you kind of have to just seek out the places that kind of fit you, you know? Um, and some yeah. people kind of, some people fit into the Philippines, some people don't. Some people fit into, uh, uh, I don't know, Mexico, some people don't. Yeah, that's true. And, and, you know, maybe some people fit into America too, you know. I can't fit in, talk for, speak for everyone. There are people even in Asia that immigrate here and, and, and don't want to leave. You know, they love the money and the comfort and, and the career opportunities. Um, it depends. I mean, somebody has to like America, otherwise nobody would be here. There's, somebody has to like it. Um, yeah, th this is, you know. But the thing is, I mean, what you said is true. Everyone fits in differently in different places. But the thing is, this isn't talked about because all everyone tells you is to stay where you are and, and change your thoughts into something good or positive. And that only goes so far. I mean, I mean, can, can I mean? You see, your hat is sitting on the table. Can you use your thoughts to, to lift it, like like Yoda in Star Wars? No, your thoughts are not all powerful. You're not going to change this environment. You're not going to change the color of that chair, you know, just by using the power of your thoughts. So why do Americans think that their thoughts are all powerful and can change everything? You see what I mean? This doesn't make sense. But that's what everyone says. Okay. Um, Isn't that such a thing? Of course, a positive attitude is good, but it's not enough. It's not complete. You know, you're not going to change other people or your culture by thinking things. You can't even lift the hat off the table like, like they do what they could in Star Wars. Right. So, so how are thoughts going to change your reality? I don't get that. It's like a universal mass delusion. Even among free thinkers, they all say that, that thoughts create reality. I guess, I guess some of us expats, we just, we literally just want... Yeah, there's the roller coaster. Wow. I don't, I, I don't get why some people get off on that. I've never understood that. Um, we, some of us expats, we just, we just have this strong urge to just get out of the box. We just want to get out of this box that we're in and and see what's outside in this world. It's like that. It's like that movie, uh, The Truman Show, where he. You know, Jim Carrey is always, he sees this advertisement for Fiji and he's like, he tells his friend, like, have you ever thought about Fiji? And then like his friend kind of shuts him down because the Truman Show is all about, it's like this, this artificial like reality that he's in <laughs> and, and, uh, and then, you know, what the movie is about and that, and then he eventually finds out that what, what the, f it's fake. He founds out that he's he's actually like at the end of the movie that it's all fake. Uh, it, it was an interesting movie to watch. Um, oh yeah, that's a great but one. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about your experiences um, abroad. So, like, what what is your favorite country to live in abroad? Oh gosh, it's hard to say. I mean. I guess I've been in the Philippines the longest. That would be the favorite in terms of the vibe and, and the dating life. But but in terms of culture, I probably like Russia or Eastern Europe more. Like they have better, really nice museums and architecture and, and the language. I mean, it's a very, very, yeah, it's more European. It's more old soul. -less. Old um, soul. What, what What is old soul? What do you mean? Well, it's hard to explain. It's kind of like... I know. I, I guess old soul could mean you live a lot of past lives, or you're just naturally wise and down to earth. But for some reason, Eastern Europe and Russia just have this authenticity that's completely lacking in America, that resonates with me. You know, like this, this soul. You know, this this something in the soul resonates with me that is completely missing in America. And you can't explain that in words. You know, it's something you have to feel or you don't. But yeah, it's a very boring experience. But yeah, I mean, but the museums, churches, historical sites in Europe, I mean, they're spectacular. Yeah, that's I another, mean, they're beautiful. There's so much history in Europe. Yeah, for that, I would pick Eastern Europe if, if you're talking about culture and history. And um, in, in, yeah, so, yeah uh, so. So many different countries. Yeah, different places, different things. There's, you know, there's, 
I've never been there. I got to go there. I want to go to Spain, Italy, France, Russia, you know. And another thing about Europe is is public health care. You know, uh, our health care system is 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 messed up. You know, it's and um, so uh, yeah, I I got to check it out. How about like? So you're talking about the vibe in Philippines. So you know how you know how was the vibe in 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 Russia? What's the vibe like there? Oh, it was very soulful, very authentic. Um, no paranoia. People love talking to strangers, and and I, I don't know. It's it's indescribable. I mean, it's like I felt so free. I could I could meet any girl I like. I could flirt with as many women as I like and there's just no paranoid vibe or boundary between people I mean I've never experienced that ever in my whole life in, in America or, or in Taiwan either where you could just just randomly talk to any woman you want and it's no big deal it's not you're not a creep or, or, a, or a, a pervert or a predator for doing that I mean I'm not saying it's an, it's easy to find a good woman in Russia or that that life there is better i mean there's a lot of negatives in russia but in terms of like dating and, and meeting women i mean it's unbelievable it's so easy and natural i mean they're just so people there are interested to meet you you know they're the women are interested to meet you and talk to you and get to know you i mean there's enthusiasm whereas in america it's zero there's no enthusiasm toward meeting men at all zero yeah I, I feel like I have to work so hard to meet American women and have and, and gain their gain their interest it's it's, it's just yeah and, and and you know and they're closed off and it, it's not just that I mean it, it goes deeper than that because even if you find a good woman in America you know chances are she's not single and if she is she's super picky and even if she's not you may not be her type so even if you find that one in a thousand nice, good woman in America, if you're not her type, you, you, you're still out of luck. So it's like everything's against you still. So, you know, I mean, this isn't a game that seems winnable. I, I don't understand how other people are able to, 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 you know, find a relationship or marriage in America. You know, I, I guess maybe if it's meant to be, it happens. You know, I mean, have you given any thought to that, that riddle, or, wow. or how would you explain that? I mean, even a super genius can't explain. Even if Einstein were around, I probably couldn't explain it either. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, talk to someone with an IQ of 150 and ask them this question. They won't have any idea either. <laughs> yeah, but uh, marriage is definitely not a good idea here in America with the with divorce and uh, you know Jeff Bezos he lost oh. half of his fortune uh, in that divorce but yeah yeah it's just I, I don't know what it is man I, I the just I just for some reason I, I just don't feel free here in America being back now I'm ready to get out. I'm ready to go back to Asia or, or another country. Yeah, it's not just being not free. You just feel like you don't have a place here. There's nothing for you. Like you don't belong, you know, like you don't have a function here. Because here, you know, your 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 function is your job or how you contribute to the economy, you know, um, how you help someone make money. You don't have a function here because your purpose is to be yourself and to have a good social life dating life and, and to have be free that doesn't serve america there's no place for that you see what i mean you're out wow. of place it's not just that you're not free you don't have a function here yeah you know what i mean it, it you, uh, you know you're all it's all about what you do i mean america judges you by how useful you are so you know we're like an anomaly we don't you know, a total fish out of water, so to speak. You don't have a function. And and most people would probably disagree with everything I've said. And they won't know why. It, it just goes against their programming. Well, they... 
if we well, is, there's no one who can truly refute what you're saying. They they cannot prove that you're wrong with happier abroad. I mean, they they can't like prove that wrong. Yeah. Yeah, they don't refute me, but they shame me and, and tell me there must be something wrong with you. How come how come I don't have a problem? And then I'll say then I'll say. Well, there must be something wrong with the location because how come I don't have a problem in other countries? And then that gets circular over and over again. It goes around in circles forever. It it never ends. People yeah. don't want to listen. They can't. They don't want to listen. You know. Some people just yeah. I mean, if they're not open to it. They're not open to it. Well, they'd rather I mean, shame you, you or they'll totally ignore you. Yeah. yeah what were you saying? Be surprised though. There's a lot of YouTube channels, um, with coming out with videos saying that you know I'm done with America. I'm leaving. I mean, there's a lot more people coming out and saying this. Yeah, in the last five years, there's definitely more, but I would expect there to be millions. I mean, millions of Americans have gone overseas since the '80s, since America became more and more isolated in the '80s. People. Millions have gone overseas. How are there not millions saying this? That's what I don't get. You know, it's always a small handful. One one point, maybe, you know, it's like, I won't say his name, but he said it's economics, is that when you go to another country, well, now you have to figure out money. And some countries, you know, it's, it's going to be hard to get a job. Um, and, and, you know, especially if you're going to Southeast Asia, you're not going to be paid as much as you are in America. So economics you know some people that that may be the thing that's holding a lot of people back and it probably is yeah that's one major issue but the thing is i would expect millions of people to say i want to go overseas because um i'm more free and and the women are more feminine and sweet there and, and they like men more i mean you would expect people to at least be saying that because millions of Americans have gone abroad, right? I, I think, well, actually, no, I heard 5% of Americans have passports, right? Maybe it's more now, 10%. I thought it was, what? I thought it was uh, something like 30%. No, well, I, it I used to be I five. I, I don't know what higher. it is now. There's 30% have passports, maybe, maybe, but, um, but yeah, I mean, that still equals millions of people that have gone abroad, including those in the military, the Navy, They've gone abroad too, but you know, you, you would expect millions of people to be talking about what we're talking about, but they're not for some reason. That's a good question to ask people. I mean, if you're w listening to this, maybe you can explain in the comment section why aren't millions of people talking about this if these things are obvious? I mean, nothing I say is rocket science or, or complicated, these are all straight up observations. Yeah. So. Anyways, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh. Well. Yeah, but another thing, it's just it's hard to get. It's it's hard to, if you already have a life here, it's hard to transplant to get up and and literally move everything all all of your life to another part of the world when you may have social you may have friends family you may have some roots and it's just hard to just um to just move everything you know all at once yeah yeah you'd have to be really like a young single guy or someone with who's a minimalist who doesn't have a lot of attachments and can get rid of all their possessions easily you know not everyone can do that. It's tough. I mean, I mean, you have to do a lot of legwork to get rid of your attachments, your responsibilities, your car payments, your house payments. I mean, all of that takes a lot of planning. I mean, I don't know. That'd be a good expat business for you to, to help people plan their finances so they can move abroad, you know. But you'd have to be really good at finances like Rock is, like our friend Rock is. He's good at that stuff. You know, I've never been, been a practical person, so I've never been good at stuff like that. You know, I'm more into like psychology or philosophy or something. Or <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, but I'm sure if you really wanted to, you could find a way to get rid of all your attachments and obligations. And, you know, you'd have to do it little by little. 
not all at once, of course. Right. Um, but it just depends. I mean, every guy's, every person's situation is different. Yeah, and I'm. I'm sure if you're young and single, you have less attachments. It's. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? No, I think we've covered everything. I mean, I mean, if you're getting tired, we can end this soon. If you, um, unless we didn't cover something. Um. Yeah, there's, there are. Well, I can definitely say, if you are, have not lived abroad yet, you, I, I don't think you would regret it. Has, have you ever met anyone who regretted living abroad? Just a few people, not very many. I mean, some people do miss the comforts here. And some people, they went to a very dangerous country like Nicaragua where they got attacked. Mm -hmm. And so they, they felt safer in America and came back. But, you know, those are very unlucky people. Um, or some people might have, you know, spent time in jail abroad too. You know? <laughs> and then came back and, and said, oh, America is more free. Like that. Have you heard of that infamous case with Amanda Knox? No. Who went to jail in Italy for, for several years for being alleged of killing her roommate? I mean, I mean, she probably felt freer when she came back to America, too. I mean, geez. So it depends on, on, on you know, that's an extreme case, of course. But, you know, it really depends on, on the person. Yeah, most people are happier abroad, but, you know. But, you know, that's if they're, you know, what kind of person they are, if they're down to earth or something. If their whole purpose is to, to I don't know, to make, make money or something, it, that's a different story. Depends on what you're looking for, you know. I, I, I don't want to make this like a we're bashing America uh, podcast because I was thinking about the strengths of America. And one of the strengths is I think we're a very highly competitive people. I think a lot of us, we work very hard. We're very competitive. We're very smart. Yeah. We're very smart people. I mean, I think we and we work together, and we achieve a lot. I mean, yeah, Google was, Google, Microsoft, Apple was was all made in the U.S. Um, and you know, we've got a lot of innovation happening in this country. I don't want to sound like I'm too like like i'm totally against this country but but there, well, there yeah, are but it's just strengths. business and technology i mean it, that's it that's it it's all about money it's all about innovation tech you know just working and improving the processes you know and at the same time the cost of living is going up and you, you know a lot of people cannot um you know and um yeah but and another thing is just the You know, as you get older, as you get older, as especially as men, it's it's harder to, you know, build, you know, grow your social network because people have already are in their cliques. They're, you know, they're not they're not as open to making new connections if, if it's not about business. Yeah, that's kind of sad. And there's this feeling like nobody likes you for you. You know what I mean? Like, you have to be useful. Like, nobody likes you just for you. I mean, that's why in America they always tell you to love yourself. Because other people aren't going to love you, so you have to love yourself. <laughs> that's kind of unnatural. I, and I hate that because what's that going to accomplish? If I love myself, that's not going to fulfill my need for, for friendship, love, romance, uh, uh, female companionship. That's, that doesn't satisfy you to love yourself. But that's what... That's what Americans always say. It's stupid. I don't get that. Uh, well, it's unnatural. I mean, I mean, even the great, um, um, the Eastern philosopher Alan Watts, he said, "Love yourself is a fallacy because you can't kiss yourself. You can't kiss yourself on the lips. How are you going to love yourself? It's a fa uh, it's an American fallacy." Yeah, and, and yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I'd rather be. I'd honestly rather be real brutally real about you know life you know than to, to to be delusional and kind of 
you know, it's delusional. And have a fairy tale if, idea. If I tell you, what you to love yourself, is. what's that going to do? I mean, if you tried to do that, what's that going to accomplish? I mean, any nothing, right? What's what's that going to do? <laughs> it's only going to keep you locked into the to to like a, a Disney version of, of life. Oh, oh, I love myself. Okay, uh, now I, I'm I'm happy enough to live another day. Okay, but that's not a solution, you know. <laughs> I don't get why everyone says that. It's it's ridiculous. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, the things I talk about are obvious. I don't see why other people don't see them. I, I will say, I will say that we're like, I guess I, we're gonna getting close to like uh, closing this podcast here. But I will say this: one of the best things I've heard, and I already said it already, is that different cities speak to different personalities, different places speak to different people so like i'm kind of a more myself i'm more of a relaxed easygoing calm type person it's just who i am it's always who i've been that's why i fit into southeast asia because it's that's the vibe there it's just don't stress too much kind of take it easy and that's who i am so i that place speaks to me and um some people i there's a guy i went to high school with this guy is like so driven He's like a machine. He always is like on the go, and uh, and he's he's and he's tailor made for you know America, mm -hmm. which is all about business because that's who he is, you know. So I mean, if you're not, you know, if you're not happy in America, there's definitely a place in the world for you. Yeah. And, and I'm not bashing everything about America. I love the the landscapes, the beauty, the nature. And, and there's a lot of good food, you know. I, I just don't fit the lifestyle or the people or the culture. I mean, the people are just, yeah, very isolated and self-absorbed. And I just don't see how you can connect with them socially. And to me, this is a big thing because I'm a people person. I'm outgoing, you know. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I've never been a loner by choice. I don't choose to be isolated or a loner. I mean, it's kind of forced upon me. You know, <clears throat> but you're not allowed to say that. You're supposed to blame yourself in America and say, oh, I'm shy. I, I, I don't have any social skills. That's why I don't meet people or or I'm too busy with work. That's why I don't meet people, you know, but you can't say people are closed off or um, isolated or, or, or uh, not open to talking to strangers. For some reason, that's a taboo, even though it's true, it's a taboo to say that. I've never understood why. So what I'm saying now is sort of a taboo because you're supposed to bl blame yourself and say that you're too shy. You're not supposed to say people are closed off. I mean, it may be true, but you're not supposed to say that. I don't know why, but it's kind of one of those unspoken rules. You know, it's not written on the wall, but you sort of know instinctively that's the unspoken rule. You know what I mean? And so <laughs> it's a taboo to even, even analyze this. You know, the average person right. will never analyze this thing. <laughs> maybe uh, maybe because it's so true that people don't want to see the truth they just want to they want to live in the fantasy they want to live in the they don't want to know the truth yeah maybe. yeah have you heard that quote by H.L. Mencken it says that the American people will hate you for telling the truth they hate you the most if you tell the truth but they love people who, who lie to them it's a quote by H.L. Mencken. Mm, okay. I used that a couple a couple of times in my articles. Yeah, it says that people, yeah, people, the Americans detest people the who other, tell them the truth all the time. Ignorance is bliss. That other quote. Well, then, there's that too. Ignorance is bliss, but I, I don't know. I mean, do you think Americans are happy or they're just pretending to be? It's probably somewhere in the middle. Because some people, like I said, can fake it till they make it. They can convince themselves that they're happy until they actually are. You know, but <laughs> that's part of their psychological makeup. I can't do that. I mean, that is, you, you can't do that either, right? One, you can't one thing, pretend to be happy. When you were just saying that, I thought of this. Um, I've, all, I've always thought that I was an introvert, okay, in, in school. And then I read someone say that it's not – or someone said that – they, they became an introvert because they were forced to be because of the social environment. The social environment caused them to be alone, and they thought that they were an introvert. 
See, the thing with me is, is that when I when I left the country, and I went to, well, I first went to Colombia, and then I went to Asia, I was much more extroverted and outgoing, and I wanted to talk to strangers, and I was able to talk to them better, and 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 they were more open to talking to me, in all in every in almost every country I've been to. So I don't really think I'm an introvert now, because of the, that experience. I'm I'm. I'm not an introvert. I'm actually someone who is just forced into being more alone and by myself because I guess people weren't as open to talking to me here in here in America. So I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, people don't consider that. You know that that some people are forced to be an introvert because they don't fit in or they're excluded from cliques. You know, if a, you can be outgoing, but if a social clique doesn't want you in their group. You're still out, no matter how outgoing and friendly you are. So you can be outgoing and friendly, but if the social cliques don't like you, you know, and it may not even be your fault that they don't like you, they they just don't vibe with you, then you're out. You know, you're you're forced to be an introvert. You know, or if women don't want to date you and they all say you're not my type, then then you know, you can't control that. You're still out. It doesn't matter how outgoing or friendly you are. Americans never consider that, you know. They never consider that you can be an introvert by choice, or what do they call it—a involuntary celibacy, celibacy yeah. incel, or something. <laughs> There's that in, new term called incel, involuntary yeah, celib- I'm, celibacy. I'm pretty sure issue. that's that's only in the West. That's only in the West. Yeah, it, it doesn't exist in Southeast Asia, at least. I don't know about other countries, but yeah, you don't see loneliness in in most other countries, usually. Or isolation, and plus loneliness is a taboo topic. You're not supposed to talk about it. You're supposed to pretend that you don't need anyone. And oh, I'm an independent. I don't need anyone. I, I love myself. I don't need someone to be happy. You're supposed to say that. No, you're not supposed to 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 need love or to need romance or to need a female partner or even a male partner. I mean, you're supposed to to. Be happy alone. I, I don't. Know, I don't get that. It's not you, natural. Do you know about the the Hikam, Hikamori in Japan? It's like no. These, what is that? I maybe I didn't say it right, but I I read about it. It's, uh, it's these these young men who live with their you know parents for you know and they they stay they don't go outside. They they just stay at home and they stay there for the rest of their lives and they they don't they don't go out into the world they don't meet women and they just like are just on their computer like all day long um but japan i mean japan is a uh you know it's is it kind of isolating there too i heard it's hard to meet women there too for for japanese men and even for foreign men i'm i was there we'll see like it's a workaholic country too like singapore right exactly um, Where everything's to the extreme in, in the bad way. <laughs> a lot of people say a lot. Some people say you can you can if you're a foreigner you can integrate there, and then some people say that you can't. But the Japanese people they they do not they do things the Japanese way. They're not like I mean yeah they're probably too rigid and plus it's expensive and it's it's a workaholic culture, just like a, a Singapore and Korea. You've been to Korea, right? I mean, you've seen what that's like. Oh my! Too. Oh, in, Korea! I in, was in, in some Seoul. Countries. It it was the most cold, depressing, socially closed off place I've ever been in my life. I couldn't talk to anyone there, um, and it's probably because they just viewed me as some, you know, backpacker, like foreigner, and um, but but even even when I observed the the Korean people like speaking to each other. They were so like, they looked depressed. They looked like they were just like, like just so serious. Because Korea, it's like one of the most uh, work focused. Like they they are workaholics there. So yeah, I guess I guess the more the higher the work level, the higher the focus on work, the 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 less the more isolation there is in a country. Oh, um, yeah. That's probably really true. The, the, the correlation between that it really exists is true. Uh, exists, but yeah, I don't like how those Northeast Asian countries take workaholic to the extreme too. I mean, but but you still said that China is 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 a more serious country. It's a more work country, but but that the the social environment is much, 
you said it's, it's more open and friendly there? Yeah, sort of. Because China... Um, <laughs> China is not that homogenous, you know? Like Korea or Japan or Taiwan. Um, right, oh, right. Um, yeah, there's an ambulance behind us for some reason. <laughs> On the street. <laughs> That's funny, that gets into the podcast too. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, China is... is I mean, it's, so, it's supposed to be a workaholic country too, but it's just not... It's hard to explain. I mean, I mean, I mean, people say that the Chinese government is very tyrannical and stuff, and in some ways it is, but I, I don't know. It, it's hard to explain. It's like people are still authentic there. They're still, they're not as closed off or, or, or unsocial. So maybe I'm thinking like it, maybe it's a middle ground. But the thing is, China is not as social as it used to be. It's, it's less social now than what it was Why? ten or fifteen years ago. I mean, everyone says that. I don't know. It seems like things are getting worse there too. But the thing is, um, in China, cost of living is still decent. I mean, you, we can go to a restaurant for a lot less than the U.S. Mm. with no tips. Um, it doesn't feel taboo to talk to a stranger there, even if it's a little inappropriate. Um, the health care there is still, you know, affordable. Um, it doesn't cost a fortune to see a doctor there. So there are, there are some things that are reasonable in China. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, we could eat out at a, at a restaurant without spending a, a lot with no tips, like I said. Um, so the cost of living is still, still much less than the U.S., even though people... The Western media claims it has no freedom or something, or the government's so tyrannical. I mean, it's like the U.S. is trying to make the boogeyman, ch make China into the boogeyman rather than looking at itself and, and fixing its own problems. It wants, they want you to look for a boogeyman outside. And China's, China or Russia are the scapegoats. Oh, look at that. How terrible they are. Our, our country is so much better, you know. They always want yeah, to compare. It's like they're, they want an outside enemy somewhere. It's like they're, they're creating us. They're creating a story for us that we're forced to believe, you know, when, um, you know, when you should think for yourself instead of listening to what they're saying. That, uh, well, yeah, they, they, they want to distract you into something, some drama outside, you know, I mean, in, yeah, we, in real that, life. That's the one thing I want to say. We've been lied to from the beginning. The, the teachers, our teachers lied to us. Our parents lied to us. Um, that you're, our, your manager lied to you at work. Um, you know, think for yourself. Be red pilled. You know, take the red pill and you know see reality for what it is. But um, I want to I want to end on a uh, on a good note here. Yeah. And I want to ask you, what are you most proud of? What are what are you most proud of, and and what you've created in, in, in happier abroad? What? Well, I, I guess. I'm proud to be open-minded so I can see, experience all this and to see these things and have, to have these observational abilities, you know? So I guess being open-minded is what allows me to see these things, you know? I guess I'm glad for that. Also for the blessings I have, you know, my health is decent, you know, my finances are decent, so so I can travel, you know? So, so I guess you got to appreciate what you have and realize that you're better off than someone else and that, you know, there's always someone else in a worse situation for you. So you got to appreciate the things you do and you have and count your blessings, you know. That's a good spiritual teaching that's real, you know. It's not fake or new agey. Sure. Exactly. But, yeah, my open-mindedness, I guess, is what... Um, and I guess, I don't know, I'm just good at observing and comparing cultures... Um, which people don't usually do. You know, people, for some reason, it's a taboo to compare cultures. People don't do that usually. When they when they compare cultures, they, they, it's usually about economics or, po or politics, not about the stuff we talk about. Um, but you created, you created the concept. It's called Happier Abroad. And you created the website and the articles so that everyone, everyone who has access to the Internet can find it. Yeah, yeah. I, I put this out on the internet, and, and whoever's meant to find it probably will. I mean, it may not be for everybody, but there's somebody out there that is meant. This is meant for, and that the, I think the universe will guide them to find it somehow. Um, 
Yeah, I, I think that's amazing that, that, that you chose to do that and not keep it to yourself. So that, that, that is – that's – Well, that's the thing. When I first discovered this in 2002, it was something obvious. I mean, I, I you don't I, – I wasn't – you know, I'm not a genius or anything like that. It, it's just something obvious, like this blue sky, something obvious. I saw something obvious and I started talking about it. Um, it you don't have to be smart to see these things. They're They're – they're very apparent. Okay, but then why? So, but but then why did uh, why did not uh, why did no one before you who has traveled abroad from America also see the same thing and, and talk about it? Well, well, that's the question. I'm wondering. You know, I wonder that a lot. If somebody can tell me that or put it in the comments section, that'd be great. I mean, I, I'm wondering the same thing. I, I guess, you know, I guess I don't know. It seemed maybe. If it's not part of your life mission or your life path, you, you don't talk about it. Maybe what I do is part of my life path or life mission or whatever or, or destiny or whatever. Uh, maybe it's in my blood or something. I mean, um, maybe other people have a different path and so – or they don't see things the same way. So they don't talk about it. That's the only ex thing you can explain. I mean, there's no other way to explain it. Yeah. Because what's obvious to us may not be obvious to other people, or they, they just don't care about it. Some people don't care about dating or social life. They, they, they have enough friends. They just want to make a living, and that's it. You know. Some people, yeah, it's not part of their reality, I guess. I don't know. There's not much other way you can explain it, but... <laughs> But the thing is, we assume other people are like us and see the same same things. They don't. Everyone makes that fallacy. We assume other people are the same as us, and and, and they aren't. You know. Exactly. Yeah. Do you have any any good advice or, or final comments for everyone? Think for yourself. Don't 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 let other people. Don't listen. Uh, you know, always think for yourself. Be an independent thinker. Be a critical thinker, and um, have curiosity. That's it. Yeah, and ask yourself. I mean, what do you really want to be happy? What do you really need to be fulfilled? You know, don't do what society tells you to do to be fulfilled. Ask yourself deep in your heart what you want to do to be fulfilled. I mean, what you need to be happy, not not what society tells you. That's the main message. All right. Well. Uh, All right. Well, this was great. Yeah, this was a really interesting discussion. Uh, <laughs> you know, we might have covered this before, all this before, but at least you know it, it's still unique in that other people on YouTube don't talk about it this deeply. You know, even though a lot of this material has been rehashed, it's still unique because <laughs> very few people are talking about this. Yeah. It's been great. I mean, we should do this more often. I mean, get, get, get that. Pe so, all right, we're going to close here again. So, uh, uh, thanks for listening. And um, I guess sh share this video wherever you can. Share this, share it. And uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, if you think you know anyone that needs to hear this message, yeah, share it with them. Yeah, thanks for listening if you got this far. And um, yeah, I hope, hope we've planted some seeds and given you something to think about or, or woken up your mind or whatever. Take care, everyone. Thanks for listening. Till next time.